So in this video, we're going to talk about a boat that has dual inboard engines. Typically that's on the cabin boats in our fleet. May in the future be other boats that have that kind of style, but uh, the three different styles are dual inboard, single inboard, and dual outboard. So today we're going to take you guys out on the Regal cabin boat, give you guys an explanation how to use a boat with dual engines, and uh, go over that for you guys. So I've shown up for my afternoon booking. I have a booking from 2 to 6. Of course I've shown up at exactly 2 o'clock. Uh, arrived in the marina, this, the boat is going to be ready for me, cleaned and ready to go, and uh, the staff is going to be there. Just as a reminder, as always, be like everybody else, whenever I'm getting on the boat, you have your DMCA license and your membership card. If you don't have your license, it's a 4,000 that I'm fine. If you don't have your membership card, it's a 2,000 that I'm fine from the authorities if you happen to get stopped. So the staff is under very strict orders not to let members out. If you happen to forget these, uh, you know, we ask that you go back and get them. If you can't, then please check if one of the captains available and the captain will then take you on your trip. But these are very important. So this is Captain Jay. Good afternoon. Jay was our uh, very first employee of Warrior Free Boat Club after myself. So Jay has a checklist ready for me. Uh, you know, it should have the name of the member, the time that I'm going out, which boat it is. He's indicated the fuel level on the checklist. Of course, when I get on the boat, I'm going to double check that. Uh, once I review it, give my little signature, and then we'll head out. Please remember, no hard sole shoes on the boat. If you're wearing soft sole, soft sole shoes, it's all right, but if you're wearing shoes with hard soles, please don't get on the boat or remove them before you get on. So again, this is the Regal Cabin Boat. Uh, there's two inboard engines directly underneath me with two propellers uh, under the swim platform. So normally the staff will have the boats running for you when you get here. We'll go ahead and start it now, just so you guys can see what that process is like. Um, but the staff will usually have it on board so you can check the fuel level. So there's two keys, one for each engine. Something to keep in mind on the dual engine boats is there may be different accessories on different engines. So even if you're only running, running one engine, maybe the radio won't work, the power steering won't work. So it's important that when you're running a dual engine boat that you have both engines running to get all the functionality of the boat. So we can check the fuel level. Jay will show me the fuel level is approximately uh, almost exactly half. So he'll mark half on the checklist. So when I return the boat, I can either return it back half tank or I fill it up on my way back and then the guys will credit my account. I always want to make sure that the safety equipment's in place, even if the guys say that it is, you know, I like to take my life into my own hands. So for a boat that has capacity of eight, there should be eight life jackets on the boat, but you want to make sure that there's at least enough life jackets for the amount of people. So let's say today I have, you know, there's three of us, so there's three life jackets laid out. There's some kids' life jackets as well if you need kids' life jackets. Typically the boats have two each if you need more, just ask the guys. Uh, you want to make sure that the flares and everything are, you know, look like they're in good shape. Most importantly, though, is life jackets. So, you know, there's three of us, there's three life jackets in place, so we're good to go. So now that I know that it is, we'll let the engines warm up for a minute or two, and, uh, you know, we'll take the lines off and we'll head out. So when you're pushing off, the staff will be there, clear your lines, uh, and help push you off. Today there's a little bit of a wind, so it's important that you're paying attention when they pull the ropes off because they may pull the ropes off and the boat starts to drift and you're, and you're not noticing. The ropes are clear, two of you will give me a signal. I got Jay on the boat with me as well so we can pull the fenders and stuff when we get off the board, off, off the marina. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get underway. So on a dual engine boat, you have two controls. Obviously the left throttle is for the left engine, the right throttle is for the right engine. When I'm parking on a dual engine boat, one of the benefits is, is that you can use the, the, the engines against each other or you can use a single engine to give you a little bit more uh, smaller turning radius. So the pontoon's on our left, which means we're going to pull out kind of straight back to the right. Uh, so I'll use my left engine with a little bit of turn to the left and it'll pull me straight off the marina. Okay. So it's also important that when you're pulling away from the marina, you want to take it really nice and slow. You know, the boats, they do get scratched up a little bit from the members parking and, and disembarking. So make sure you're taking it nice and smooth when you get out. Again, I only have the left engine engaged because the pontoon's on my left and I want to be pulled away from it show later in another video when you're on a right pontoon how you do that so we're just now clear of the pontoon so I give it a full turn I'll engage the right engine which will give us a little bit more speed but it also pull us tighter in a tighter circle once the boat is almost parallel I'll go ahead and put it back in neutral and then again I'll put the left engine engaged the right engine engaged and we can start moving forward so one of the important things that a lot of people forget about is once you're underway 
once you're clear of the marina, you need to pull in the fenders. So typically on the boat, there's at least two, if not three fenders. So Jay will jump up on the front, pull that fender in. Again, you know, it happens, they get lost, but we charge about 100, 150 dinos for the fenders. Uh, that's, that's how much they cost. So please make sure when you're disembarking from the marina that you pull the fenders in. Also very important when you're in the marinas, keep your speed down. Try not to be too loud and have the music blaring. The marinas don't like that. Obviously there's other boats, there's other guests. We're surrounded by apartments, so you know, please be courteous. Inside the marina, you need to keep it under about four or five knots. Typically I just keep the gear engaged until I'm clear of the marina. That'll keep you around three or four knots. And then once you get outside, uh, you know, obey the, the signage that's there. We're now clear of the marinas. I'll go ahead and spin it around and we'll show it apart. One of the cool tricks of having a dual engine boat again is you can play the engines against each other. So if you put the right engine in forward and the left engine in reverse, the boat will spin. So if you keep the wheel dead ahead, you have one engine in reverse, one engine in forward, the boat will make almost a perfect 360 turn. So we're getting back to being straight ahead. Again, I disengaged the left engine. I got the right engine engaged. Give me a nice tight turning radius. When you guys are coming back into the marina, you know, it's helpful. The guys are normally here uh, all the time, but when you give, if you give them a call when you're heading back to the marina, it makes it helpful to make sure that they're just there waiting for you. So you're not waiting for them to run from another boat or perhaps they're in the restroom or something. So please, when you're coming back into the marina, make sure you give them a phone call. Also, of course, you know, when you're leaving, if this is your first time in the marina, try to look around at the other boats make sure that you're pulling into the right uh, channel when you're coming back in so you don't park in the wrong parking space. So I know this is the G-Birth and the Palm, all of our boats are in the G-Birth. Uh, you know, some of our boats are there on the right, so I, I clearly know that this is the right parking space. Now, again, the pontoon is gonna be on my left when I park, so it's a little bit easier to park that way. But again, I wanna make sure that I don't cause any damage to the boat. I wanna make sure that I'm being safe. I'll take it really nice and smooth sure that the boats lined up for the parking space. I'm only going to use one engine to get me lined up. perfectly in the spot, but the most important thing is we're going really slowly so that you guys have a chance, you know, to help you out without the boat running into the marina. So you get it pretty much lined up, the staff's there, they grab the ropes, they'll tie me up and, uh, you know, make sure I grab all my belongings and then we can get out of here. So you want to leave the engines on while you're parking just in case, uh, you know, a big wind comes, the guys drop the boat, the, the rope in the water. I want to leave the engines running, but I want to leave them in neutral. You don't want a rope falling in the water, getting caught up in the propellers. So the boats are neutral, but the engines are running. The guys will tie me up once I know that I'm lined up with the, with the parking space. I'll go ahead and cut them off. Again, Jay will come back. He'll check the fuel level. Tell me, you know, perhaps I've used an eighth of a tank. This is how much it's going to cost. Again, because I'm a great member of Worry Free Boat Club, I'll make sure that I have cash on hand so I can give the guys the, the money for the fuel. Or if I'm even a rock star member, I've already gone and filled up the fuel myself. So Jay's gonna come over here, we'll cut the engines off. Again, left key, left engine, right key, right engine. He's gonna check the fuel level. He's gonna indicate on the checklist. The fuel level is the same as when I left. So I'm gonna take a look, I'm gonna say, okay, I don't owe any money for fuel because I filled it up. If not, you know, for an eighth of a tank of fuel, I owe 195 dirhams. I'll sign the checklist. He'll sign the checklist. You know, it's not a bad habit to take a picture of it just in case later on if there's any questions. If you have any comments, if I can just uh, take a quick note, there's a comment section on the checklist. If there's any issues, anything you notice, anything that happened while you're on your trip, whatever it may have been that might be relevant to you, to the club, or certainly to any other members, please make sure you note it here on the checklist. Uh, we do read those comments. We do our best to address any concerns that you guys have sometimes. We learn about problems from the members. So please make sure to take section if there's something wrong. Thank you very much, Jay. Here's my imaginary money. And, uh, you know, collect all your belongings. We do get a lot of leftover things on the boats. Uh, you know, we try to hold on to things, but 
You know, it's a bit difficult for us with multiple bookings every day. Sometimes members do leave some valuables on the boat, and unfortunately, we're not always able to recover them. So my guests are now off the boat. After my guests get off the boat, I'm just going to spend 30 seconds, walk through the boat, make sure I didn't leave anything. Jay's going to check the boat, make sure I didn't take anything or break anything while I was on my booking. You know, the life jackets are where they where I left them. You know, I got my cell phones in my pocket. I got my, my sunglasses on. Everything's okay. My guests had a great time. All's clear. We get off the boat and enjoy the rest of our day. So that's a quick explanation of how to operate a dual engine cabin boat. Um, you know, the, the, again, the captains are always available for you. You do have that those free captain bookings when you join the club. Please take advantage of them, especially early on in your membership, so that the guys can give you a proper, thorough explanation. They can take you guys outside and show you where the cool spots are, where you can park, where you can't park, those kinds of things. Thanks again, appreciate it. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself, Wayne, Cheryl, any member of the Worry Free Blow Club team, Ijaz, we're all here to help. And uh, again, we thank you for your business. Jay, say bye to everybody. Thanks again, take care.